रहमान रहीम अस्सलाम वालेकुम स्टूडेंट्स वी कंटिन्यू आवर डिस्कशन इन द फील्ड ऑफ माइक्रोबायोलॉजी आवर टुडेज टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज नॉर्मल फ्लोरा ये स्टूडेंट्स नॉर्मल फ्लोरा वेरी ऑफनली आस्क टॉपिक इन माइक्रोबायोलॉजी वाइवा स्पेशली This topic is specially important from viva point of view. J students, how we define normal flora? Normal flora, in very simple means, the microorganisms which are permanent residents of our different body sites. I repeat, students. normal flora means the microorganisms which are permanent residents of our different body sites students keep one thing in mind that this normal flora is not present inside the vital organs host vital organs are sterile for example brain kidneys urinary bladder these are sterile heart the vital organs are sterile there is no occurrence of normal flora in the vital organs especially blood blood is sterile students there is no normal flora in the vital organs in the blood only the microorganisms which we indicate as normal flora are present at typical body sites and you all know very well from the discussion or reading of microbiology that these typical body sites are mouth oral cavity nostrils upper respiratory tract urethra you can say that those sites which may come in contact with the external environment the nature has created a protective mechanism by the creation of normal flora now students normal flora and commensals the same thing normal flora and commensals the two are same things now there is a slight difference in normal flora and opportunistic microorganisms students opportunistic microorganisms are those microorganisms which becomes pathogenic which retain their ability to cause virulence only when the host immune status is compromised i give some of the important examples of normal flora students we mostly see skin stuff epidermidis i am writing here the most important ones i and i will request you all people to please memorize the most important members of the normal flora don't go after the least important ones skin stuff epidermidis nose stuff aureus mouth viridens streptococci dental plaques st 
स्ट्रेप्टोकोकस म्यूटेंस गेंजाइवा डिफरेंट एनोरोब्स विरिडेंस स्ट्रेप्टोकोकाई कोलन बैक्टीरियोइड्स एंड वेजाइना कोलाई एंड लेप्टोबेसिलस लेप्टोबेसिलस आई रिपीट स्टूडेंट्स दीज आर द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिज्म और मेंबर्स ऑफ द नॉर्मल फ्लोरा ऑफ दीज टिपिकल बॉडी साइड्स स्किन स्टेफ एपिडर्माइडस नोज स्टेफ ऑरियस माउथ विरिडेंस स्ट्रेप्टोकोकाई डेंटल प्लेक्स स्ट्रेप्टोकोकस म्यूटेंस गिंजाइवा डिफरेंट एनोरोब्स थ्रोट विरिडेंस स्ट्रेप्टोकोकाई कोलन बैक्टीरियोइड्स एंड वेजाइना इकोलाई प्लस लेक्टोबेसिल नाउ स्टूडेंट्स हेयर कम्स अ पॉइंट that why nature has created this normal flora why normal flora or in other words you can call it as clinical significance of normal flora in examination it may be asked as what are the advantages of normal flora in the human body or discuss the clinical significance of normal flora same thing j number 1 clinical significance of normal flora they protect the host from infecting pathogens how micro normal flora protect the host because they do not provide enough space and food for the new coming pathogens okay number 2 clinical significance they produce vitamin b and vitamin k especially the normal flora of colon students they produce vitamin b and vitamin k and we have seen that patients with unjustified use of antibiotics they often develop deficiencies of vitamin b why they develop this is because the unjudicious use of antibiotics it kills the normal flora of the colon number 3 normal flora help in different i use the word the proteolytic enzymes proteolytic enzymes produced by different microorganisms in the normal flora they protect the host from infections as we have seen in normal flora of the eye 
that tears contain the lysozymes the normal flora of the eye they also may produce the lysozymes which prevent from infections okay students these are the three main advantages of normal flora now there are certain conditions in which these normal flora microorganisms they no more longer remain non dangerous they become dangerous what are the conditions which may these microorganisms of normal flora harmful for the host number 1 decrease immune status of the host decrease immune status of the host number 2 change in the location of normal flora change in the location let's see the normal microorganisms the normal flora of urethra are e coli there happens in clinical conditions that during foley's catheterization during forceful catheterization of the urinary tract these e coli bacteria they are moved from their normal site to the abnormal site they are ascended upwards with the foley's catheter and as a result they may cause infections of the kidney similarly the normal flora of skin may enter the blood stream and reach the heart through blood stream in iv drug abusers repeated <clears throat> iv lines students there is an important point i have remembered here that normal flora includes to almost all extent bacteria only viruses protozoa worms they are not included in the normal flora candida albicans is an example of the yeast which is included in the normal flora of skin okay and it might cause endocarditis in iv drug abusers which pushes the normal flora of the skin deep into the blood stream which reaches the heart and cause endocarditis okay students now what is the disadvantage of the normal flora we have discussed the clinical significance or advantages what could be the disadvantages of normal flora students keep one thing in mind that these advantageous microorganism can become very harmful for the host if by chance the host becomes immunocompromised or in cases of trauma road side accident these microorganisms of normal flora they may be pushed from the superficial skin and mucous membranes into the deeper tissues and blood stream thereby causing infections so 
it was all about brief discussion of normal flora thank you very much students allah hafiz